Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, this is the part number two of our Bible study on today. Cast not away your confidence, would have great recompense of reward. And as we were saying, God will bless you if you don't cast away your confidence. God will uh, strengthen you and keep you as you journey on. Now, we want to look at now uh, some reasons why you should not, uh, you, you must be confident in your faith unto the end. We want to talk about some reasons why you must be confident in your faith until the end. And the first reason uh, why you must be confident with your faith until the end is found in verse 19. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness. We're in Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse 19. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And I want to say that, that the reason why we don't want to give up our confidence is that we can come, like I said earlier, boldly to the throne of grace by the blood of Jesus. We have that access. We have that ability if you are abiding in Christ Jesus. And sometimes we forget all the privileges that we have uh, in him. Uh, uh, that's why Paul said, in him I live and I move and I have my being. And when you realize that you have a, a, a tremendous amount of great and precious promises, when you realize that you have a tremendous amount of great blessings in Christ Jesus, it can cause you to be confident. It can cause you to, to, to don't cast away your boldness. When, you, when you're enduring tests and trials, when you're enduring tribulation, those are the times if you've established a relationship with the Lord, you know where to go. Uh, you know who to call on. You know who you got your hope and trust in. And then you realize that this is a life affliction, which is just but for a moment, but it's working for us, the scripture says, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. So that's one of the reasons. The next reason why we must not cast away our confidence is because we have a great high priest, the scripture says. We have a great high priest over the house of God. And that's uh, Hebrews 10, 21. We have a great high priest. We have somebody that has not only uh, gone where we're trying to go, which is to heaven, but he's already uh, uh, paid the ultimate price through his suffering, through his pain. The scripture says that it behooved Christ to suffer and to give his life as a ransom and that the gospel should be preached in his name beginning at Jerusalem. And it was necessary that he be made like unto you and I so that he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, our weaknesses. So Jesus knows. When we sing that song, Jesus knows all about your struggles or all about your troubles, Jesus knows because he himself was tempted in all points, just like you and I are tempted in all points. But notice, he had the victory, yet without sin. So he knows how to uh, 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 deliver you out of all of your struggles and temptation. My God, hallelujah. So, so this high priest then, as, as, as one who stands in the presence of the Most High God, seated uh, far above principalities and powers and rulers, he is there to make intercession for you and I. He's praying for us 
all the time. He sees, he knows what's going on in our lives because we're connected to him through the spirit. Ah, oh, my God. We're connected to him through the spirit and that connection is like an umbilic umbilical cord, hallelujah, of a pregnant mother that has the baby in her womb and the baby is able to feed off of the mother through that umbilical cord. We are able to feed off of Jesus Christ through the spirit, uh, through the anointing, through the power so that we can be able to overcome every situation. That's why he said, don't cast away your confidence in times of struggle and times of temptation. And another reason why we should not cast away our, our struggle is, I uh, just want to reiterate that we have a high priest over the house of God who can be touched. Amen. So, hallelujah. He is our great high priest. Thank you, Lord. He's the one that shed his blood. Those, those priests under the old covenant, they could uh, only survive and live, uh, uh, and they died, and they were no more. And they offered up sacrifices once a year for the people. But Jesus and his sacrifice, he offered up this sacrifice once and for all for us. And his order is, uh, is not after a Levitical order priesthood, but his order of priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek, which is an eternal, everlasting priesthood. So Jesus is a priest now, today, and forever. Hallelujah. To offer gifts, to offer sacrifices, and to offer intercession for you and I. You remember when Jesus said to, to Peter, Peter, the apostle Peter, the devil has desired or Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But notice what Jesus said. I prayed for you. <laughs> he said, I prayed for you that your faith won't fail, that your confidence won't fail. That's another term for faith is confidence. Hallelujah. So your faith won't fail. Thank you, Lord. And he said this, because I prayed for you that your faith won't fail. That word fail means shrink or fall flat. Uh, he said that I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. And he said, when thou art strengthened, uh, that test and that trial is going to strengthen you. Uh, whatever you're going through, uh, doesn't matter what it is, it's meant to strengthen you. Uh, and when thou art strengthened, when you come through it, then you turn around and strengthen your brother. Hallelujah. You strengthen those around you. My God. Uh, uh, the scripture tells us that when, when Israel went into war, uh, God did not like the fearful around the troops because the fearful would put fear in the, 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 those that are around. Uh, and, and caused them not to want to fight the war. But he wanted those around the troops to be confident. Amen. We set atmosphere. We're atmosphere setters. If you set the atmosphere for confidence, if your mind is confident, then you will set an atmosphere of confidence. If your mindset is fearful, full of anxiety, you'll set an atmosphere of, of fearfulness and anxiety. You are what you think, and the atmosphere around you is, is predicated upon what you are thinking, what is going through your mind. You are a powerful creature. My God, you have, you have the ability to set and change the mood. You have the ability to set and change the atmosphere around you. That's why we should always be confident in our God. In the face of adversity, be confident. That's why David, my God, I got to move off from this. But that's why David, when, when he went out to battle, well, to fight Dave, uh, Goliath, uh, before he got there, Dave, uh, Goliath, put out a, an air of fear in the troops of Israel. And, and that was their environment. 
They were afraid to fight. My God, they were afraid to send somebody down and fight against Goliath. Now notice, David, he came into the atmosphere with confidence. <laughs> and because of his confidence, he was able to boast in his God, having faith in his God, uh, to go down and to fight Goliath and even prophesy as to what he was going to do to Goliath to slay him and take off his head. And because he had that air of confidence, when he moved in faith and slew the Goliath, the rest of the army of Israel became emboldened with that atmosphere of confidence and went down and slew all the rest of the Philistines. Hallelujah, my God. I hope you hear me on today. My God, I hope you hear me on today that your confidence, uh, it exudes an atmosphere. Hey, hallelujah, when those around you can thrive, hallelujah, those around you can be bold and confident. My God. So we have that type of great high priest uh, that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Uh, the, the, the third example of why we shouldn't cast away our confidence, uh, I'm about finished, is, is, is out of Hebrews uh, 10 and 22. And it talks about our hearts and our conscience and our bodies <laughs> have been washed with pure water. In other words, uh, we should be confident in that our, our, our trust in the Lord. He cleanses us. He, he purges us. A lot of times, the enemy would kind of bring to your mind that you are unworthy, uh, that, that you are no good, that you have no value. But when you are in Christ Jesus, oh my God, he, he cleanses you. Uh, he purges you and your heart, your mind, and your conscience. The water uh, baptism acts like a, a purging agent, a cleansing agent, and he cleanses your con conscience. He takes away those, those, those evil thoughts and those evil deeds that you have done in your past that would always try to spring up and, and plague you from being the best you you can be in Christ Jesus. Notice what the scripture says. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So as long as you are walking after the spirit and you're fighting the good fight of faith and you lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you, you can walk in boldness. You can walk in confidence. Hallelujah. No matter about how the enemy throws his fiery darts at you, you be bold. You be confident. Hallelujah. You stand fast. Hallelujah. In the faith. You stand fast in the liberty where would Christ have set us free. Ah, oh, my God, because you've been cleaned, because you've been washed. You not have been redeemed with corruptible things, but you've been redeemed and, and bought with a price with the precious blood of Jesus, which is able to cleanse you and purge you from all of your sin, all of your filth. Hallelujah. That, 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 that is why we ought not to cast away our confidence. And the fourth one, is that in heaven, we have a better enduring substance. We ought not cast away our confidence while we're fighting this good fight because we have something better in heaven waiting for us. That's why the scripture says, uh, uh, cat, uh, set your affections on things above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. You've got to set your, your affections, what you love, what you desire in heaven. Uh, the scripture says that we have originated from heaven. Uh, we, we, we are in Christ Jesus who is in heaven. And our affections, our desires must match where we are 
are spiritually in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God. So, so we've got an inheritance. The uh, uh, Lord has, has, has redeemed us from the power of Satan, uh, from darkness. We've been redeemed from darkness to light uh, uh, so, that, so that we can receive this inheritance through repentance and remissions of our sin. And so that we can, we have a better hope, hallelujah, not just in this life, but in the life to come. My God, we've got a better hope, not just in this life, but in the life to come. I say it again, we've got a better hope, a better enduring hope, not just in this life, hallelujah, my God, not just in this life, but in the life to come. And this life is worth living with Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people uh, may say that Jesus is just a myth, a fragment of somebody's imagination. Even if he was, this life, hallelujah, my God, is better uh, to live in the sense of, of following after the scriptures and the word of God than without following after the scriptures and the word of God. I'd rather live the life that I'm living Hallelujah, then live the life that I was living, my God. Because with him, uh, I surely have hope. With him, we surely have a promise, my God. Now, let, let us go then. Ah, oh, my God, hallelujah, my God. I'm loving this Bible study. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 10. And let's go to verse 35 again as we begin to wrap this up. Hallelujah. It says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense and reward. Notice, he says, For ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, after you have paid the price, uh, you have need of patience. Patience deals with endurance. Amen. The ability to abide under the pressure. And that's Hebrews 10, 37. No, I'm sorry. Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of patience that after you have done God's will, after you have uh, 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 kept the faith, after you have held your peace, after you have waited on God, after you have done whatever that was necessary according to the scriptures, uh, you might receive the promise. God, he will give you the promise. God will strengthen you. So you've got to maintain an attitude of being steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now notice then, thank you Lord, in our scripture, it says, verse 38, it says, now the just shall live by faith. And if any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Uh, the righteous uh, shall uh, live by faith, faith in the Lord, faith in his promises. Those that are declared to be just or those that are declared to be righteous are those that live by the faith of the Son of God. You've got to live by his faith. And notice what he says. My soul has no pleasure in him that draws back. God does not, is not pleased when we draw back from our responsibilities. When we draw back from uh, standing up for his word. The Lord has no pleasure in us if we fail and give way to cowardice. Uh, for the Bible says the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but love and power and of a sound mind. So we can't, we can't throw away that which God, hallelujah, is blessing us with. We can't cast away our confidence uh, and, 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 and turn for uh, a, a, a way out. Hallelujah. We can't surrender. There's no retreat in God. Uh, hey, glory. Hallelujah. There's no surrender and there's no retreat in God. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. There's no surrender. 
There's no retreat in God. You don't retire from this thing. Hallelujah. And if you, if you allow me to say that, my God, you die in this thing. Thank you, Lord. Or you're raptured in this thing. My God, you never stop being a warrior. You never stop being a fighter. You never stop being an overcomer. Hallelujah. Why? Because your God is an awesome God. <laughs> so notice what he says. Verse 30, 10 and 38. Now the just shall live by faith. We live by our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. We're just. We're declared righteous through him. And because we're declared righteous through him, we live through him by faith. <laughs> hey, glory. Hallelujah. But he said, if any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. No backsliding in Christ Jesus. My God. No, let me say that again. No backsliding in Christ Jesus. Uh, people are giving up uh, their, their positions in the body of Christ. Uh, uh, people are falling by the wayside, but that's, that's also prophecy that the, there's going to be a shaking. Amen. There's going to be a falling away, but you don't fall away. You hold on. You be steadfast. You, you look to the hills from which cometh your help, knowing that all your help cometh from the Lord. And those that fell back, uh, there's some theory out there that that they were never connected. And I have to wonder uh, if those that fall back, were they ever really connected? Because those who are truly connected, they, they continue to the end. Hallelujah. There's no turning back. Hey, my God, there's no looking back. Uh, he said, my soul has no pleasure in them that draw back. Jesus said that he that putteth his hand to the plow and look back and draw back uh, is not fit for him. Je uh, uh, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Hallelujah. When, when the fire was coming, she was given the command not to look back. And, and, and she looked back and was turned to a pillar of salt. My God, don't look back. Don't turn back. Uh, don't be like Lot's wife. Uh, hallelujah, my God. My God in heaven. Hallelujah, don't look back. Uh, hold on to God's unchanging hand. With tears in your eyes, hold on. He that shall come. Uh, he that shall come. He will come and he will not tarry. Don't turn back. Hallelujah. Hope unto the end. As the scripture says, hope against hope in the time of trouble, in the time of need. Don't turn back. Hallelujah. Now, notice in our last verse here, verse 39, he says, but we are them that, that uh, we, are, we are not of them that draw back unto perdition. And that word perdition means to be eternally damned. It means an eternal separation from God. It means a death. Hallelujah. So we are not of them that draw back. Hallelujah. Notice. But of them that uh, believe to the saving of our soul. My God. I believe to the saving of my soul. To, I believe to my deliverance comes. I, I believe. I keep on believing. I keep on trusting until he rescues me. Meaning that uh, I, I don't give up in believing. There's no break in my believing. There's no break in my confidence. But I believe. Believing, I-N-G, is a continuation. Hallelujah. I, I believe and keep believing until Shiloh comes. <laughs> I believe and keep believing until the Lord rescues me. You gotta believe and keep believing until the Lord shows his hand. You've got to endure and keep enduring until he brings you out. Hallelujah. And while you're enduring, while you're enduring, while you're enduring, your confidence is increasing. Your boldness is increasing. Your hope is increasing. Your, your trust is increasing. Your faith is increasing, not diminishing, 
but increasing until that perfect day. Hallelujah. The path of a just man gets per per brighter and brighter until that perfect day. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for this Bible study on today. Hallelujah. Don't cast away your confidence. Be confident. Be sure. Be confident in the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you like it when you see people uh, uh, walking or talking to you and they talk and walk with confidence? Thank you, Lord. If, uh, 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 I had to laugh. I, I was getting a procedure done and uh, the doctor, he came in. My wife was sitting there with me. And uh, you know that commercial that uh, comes on? I forget what the commercial is about. But uh, it's about a doctor that was asked about his confidence. And, uh, and in, the, in the, uh, the script of it, the doctor acted out that script. He and I did uh, together. And uh, it was funny. But it was a doctor that was uh, acting like he, you know, he had no confidence in his ability. And it left the patients looking. He says, what am I into? Amen. And, and, and that's what God does not want from you and I. Because when we act with boldness and confidence. Now, I'm not talking about fake it till you make it type of confidence. I'm talking about a sure, uh, a full assurance of faith. When we operate with confidence and boldness, it inspires others to operate with confidence and boldness around you. It creates that atmosphere, hallelujah, of confidence and boldness. God wants you to put the fearful among you. Hallelujah. At least they cause others to become fearful. But God wants those that trust in him because of the work that he has already done in Christ Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. You can be confident. Thank you, Lord. You can trust and hope uh, in the Lord until the end. So whatever the test is, whatever the trial is, whatever the situation is, whatever the sickness is, whatever the disease is, you can have hope and trust in God. Uh, look at Job. Job said, though you slay me, had boils on his body, sick in his body. He said, Lord, though you slay me, Yet will I trust in you. Hallelujah. He said in this flesh, uh, I'm going to see you. And that's the kind of boldness and the kind of confidence God wants us to have with him on a continual basis. We thank God for you. Uh, let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for this Bible study on today. We thank you for your power, your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is tuning in. Bless those that were yet to tune in. And, Lord, keep us in, in the center of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. And let us pray also, uh, as Christian ministries, we're going to go on our fast on tomorrow. Thank you, Lord, uh, which meaning 12 o'clock a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, we're going to be going on our fasting and prayer for the strength in the body of Christ. Amen. And our prayer is that yokes will be destroyed. Yokes will be destroyed. God is faithful. And if we be faithful to him, uh, he will manifest his power in our lives. So let us pray on that wise. Let us fast and let us seek the Lord. Amen. Also to those that are interested in giving, uh, give through Givelify, I mean, I'm sorry, to Tidely, uh, download Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church and follow the directions. Also, you can bring your tithes and your offering, your love offering, and send it to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. Or you can drop it off at our, in our lockbox here at the church. And those that have uh, benefited from this ministry, please uh, feel free to give as the Lord has blessed you. I thank God for you. I thank God for this great ministry, this opportunity to serve God's great people. And I thank the Lord that he has given me the, the mind to serve him. 
That's what it's about. That's what great success is. Serving the Lord and serving people. My God. So uh, uh, let us fulfill our ministry to be a caring church, leading souls to Christ, strengthening members and families, making disciples, equipping them for service and community ministry. And let us never forget our purpose that we might promote the gospel of Jesus Christ through effective, responsible ministry and intentional, creative, dynamic fellowship. Let us pray that we will always value love, value people, value patience, confidence, and value uh, uh, sacrifice and service. Let us always, always value patience. Let it be the hallmarks of where we live and what we do. And remember, we ought to always to be pursuing excellence until excellence is achieved. We thank God for you. May heaven smile upon you and open new doors and new horizons to greater success. In Jesus' name, amen.